Good morning, Internet. Today's the 16th. Um, before I continue with today's vlog, a couple of things I need to clear up from previous vlogs. Um, number one, yes, I am aware of the desync issues with vlog 14. Um, by desync, I mean de desynchronization of video and sound. My webcam is atrocious when it comes to actually synchronizing sound and video. And after looking at the video, it appears as though everything's about three frames behind for audio. Or, actually, I should say that the audio is... Yeah, you get the idea. It's, it's not synchronized. And the problem is that I don't have any video editing software. I'm not sure if most people are aware of this, but there actually isn't really much in the way of free video editing software for Windows. And no, Windows Movie Maker does not count. Um, most of the free pieces of video editing software are actually for Linux. And right now I am actually trying to re-render it using that VM that I created in vlog number 14, oddly enough. Um, hopefully that should finish. I'm using a piece of software called OpenShot. Uh, they are working on a Kickstarter that's going to port it to both Mac and Windows. I'll put the, the link it down below in the description. Uh, let's see, there was something else as well. What was it? Oh, um, some of you may have noticed that some of these videos appear to be slightly tilted ever since I started using the tripod. The reason being is that my mount for my cell phone, since it's soon, you're not supposed to be on the table, the mount for my cell phone doesn't actually level. Um, it pivots, which means that I can't guarantee that the phone itself is level, while the tripod has many bubble indicators and things along that nature, so... I wish I can do something better about it. I can't really right now. Uh, my best bet would be purchasing a camera, which, yes, I would like to do at some point, but given the fact that I'm going to be moving and buying a house in a week, I can't really afford such a thing, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll worry about it some other time. So, role-playing. What is role-playing? Well, when you were growing up, did you ever end up playing, you know, random make-believe games with neighbors on your block? I know that's kind of rare for... Hey, soon. Get down. I know that's kind of rare for people to do nowadays, where they, you know, have kids go outside and mingle with other kids. But, um... At least when I was a kid, I used to... I was the only boy on the block, so I ended up playing with lots of girls, and what we ended up doing was we played a lot of make-believe. Um, we would come up with a story, um, determine who's going to be what part of the story, and then start going with it. That is role-playing. I have been role-playing since I knew how to interact with people, basically. Uh, little kids' imaginations are great sources for role-playing material, oddly enough because that's what they do. Role-playing in a more modern and defined sense is a concept where you, along with multiple other people, are playing a role in some type of non-reality adventure. The non-reality could be very similar to reality, as in, say for instance, modern day, but you're slightly different roles. You aren't really a lawyer, you're really an accountant, things like that. Um, they could be fantasy-based, so you're not really this lovely paladin that has powers from their deity, you are an accountant. It could be futuristic. You are not really a um, decker and trying to score the latest job in a cyberpunk campaign, you are really an accountant. Or lots and lots and lots of Hey soon, stop misbehaving. Lots and lots and lots of other roles. Role playing at its heart is the concept that you are playing a role that you yourself do not have. That's pretty much it for the basics of role playing. Now, that doesn't mean that that's what everybody does. Um, the example that I gave earlier about the little kid's imagination and playing make believe, that's more what's called freeform role playing. There's no strict rules, there's no, hey look, we're going to all agree to the following conditions, typically. Um, some little kids did that, I was one of them, don't ask. Um, but in general, it's 
you do what you want. There's no restrictions off of what you do. There's no set of rules that you're supposed to follow. It's just role-playing. As you go further along, there's basically this axis where in one part of the axis is freeform role-playing, and all the way in the other, very, very far end, is reading a novel. The words are on the page. You don't really have any choices. You're not altering any decisions. Your plot is already laid out for you because you're reading a novel. Obviously, it's already written. You're not really interacting with the scene. You're not really interacting with the role. You're not really interacting much of anything except that your imagination may be picturing yourself as the main character. It's a form of role-playing. It's not really much in the way of play, but you are holding a role. Uh, choose your own adventure books might be a better end point. There's still... You are still a role. You are still making decisions, but those decisions are kind of weak. They had to be pre-written. I mean, there's not really much of a choice there. They can't account for every possible decision. Um, another example would be playing a Japanese-based RPG. Usually those are fairly linear. Uh, they And don't get me wrong, I like playing video game RPGs. I'm just saying that they are rather linear. The Japanese prefer something that they can predict. They prefer something that, yes, there might be a couple of surprises in there, but they're going to go from point A to point B, may hit points C through Q on the way, but they're still going to arrive at point B at the end. Um, PC RPGs... Not specifically PC RPGs. Western RPGs tend to have multiple endings. You believe that you're going from point A to point B, but you're really going to go from point A to point B prime, B omega, who knows. Um, it's a bit of a tangent, but usually role-playing games lie somewhere in between those two extremes. I'm talking about non-computer-based role-playing games here. Example, Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons is a rule set, so there are a set of predefined rules for you to follow. Regardless of what edition of D&D that you're playing, regardless of what character you're playing, you have a set of rules. These are the things that your character needs to follow in order to exist in this particular style of roleplay. Um, typically, there is somebody running a D&D game, a dungeon master in the case of D&D. That dungeon master is the one that forms a lot of the plots, tries to come up with an overall storyline, um, potentially a campaign world if I'm not re using an existing one. Um, they come up with the enemies. They come up with a lot of things. They are effectively the author of the work in the case of D&D. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to not be able to change their work. It depends on the dungeon master. Some dungeon masters are very linear, strict. They only allow the plot to go in certain places. Um, that's typically referred to as railroading, or you're on a set of rails, you are going from point A to point B, one way or the other. There's the other extreme, which is that they have absolutely nothing planned for a plot whatsoever. Um, they basically come up with a starting scenario and a giant sandbox for you to play in. Um, if you're familiar with games like Grand Theft Auto, that's another concept of a sandbox. You're presented with a world, you can do what you want with that world, but you're presented with a world. Um, there are still rules involved, there are still things that you must follow, but that's your world. Um, basically, all role-playing games follow those similar forms of, and formulas. Not all role-playing games have a dungeon master. Um, for instance, the game Fiasco. Um, it was featured on Tabletop recently. I can throw a link if anybody cares. Um, Fiasco is a DM-less game, or a GM-less, or there's lots of terms for the person that runs the game. Nobody runs Fiasco, and at the same time, everybody runs Fiasco. It's a very interesting system, and it's rather freeform. There aren't as many rules. There's still a set of rules. I still have a rule book for this, but the rule book might be about 45 pages long, and it's only about that big. I can show it at some point. Um, this is going to be a multiple series of vlogs about role-playing, because role-playing is very important to me, and it's something that a lot of people don't quite understand. Role-playing requires a large amount of imagination, not just on the part of the author, storyteller, game master, dungeon master, whatever you want to call them, but also upon the players. Um, most players have to create their own characters, and they're creating their own backstories, they're creating their appearance, creating their motivations... You get the idea.
that's probably about all. I'm going to end this vlog a little bit early, that way I don't run on and on and on and on forever. I'm hoping that a whole bunch of smaller episodes will be a little bit better when it comes to throwing the video equivalent of a wall of text at you. Enjoy!